Coming up, Seasons in Forza Horizon 5 will return, Sony is planning to do their own E3 event and Final Fantasy VII Remake is coming to PC. Hey what's up guys, welcome back once again to Gamer Connect. My name is Gavin Manis and you guys are watching top gaming news of this very week. We are returning after one week. After everybody is super happy about Xbox and its Game Pass and then everybody keep on telling everybody else that Xbox has won over PlayStation. Well, it looks like PlayStation has much more to give to everybody, including PC players, because it looks like one of their PlayStation exclusives are coming to PC. Epic Games Store backend data suggests that PC storefront will add Final Fantasy VII Remake and an unannounced remaster of Alan Wake. This is a leak coming from Games Leak and Rumors subreddit where they found something in the Epic Data website which keeps track of the Epic Store updates. There are two names mentioned by the name Heron Stagging which apparently is Final Fantasy Remake and Pineapple which apparently is Alan Wake Remaster. Now with this leak, it's not so sure whether these games will be coming to Epic Store, although back in 2020, we learned that Final Fantasy VII Remake would be exclusive to PlayStation for a year. And now, it's been more than a year because the game came out in April last year. So maybe a PC release could be coming soon, and this leak might suggest that that is happening as well. Alan Wake Remaster, on the other hand, well, it was never announced, but it makes sense that it will come to Epic Store because Control came in Epic Store first and then stayed in Epic Store for a year and then came to Steam. Moreover, there was also a crossover between Control and Alan Wake. Along with that, Remedy has already told that they will be expanding this universe and they are currently making two games which will be published by Epic. Well, it will be super awesome to see Final Fantasy VII Remake, an exclusive coming to PC. Not only that, Alan Wake Remaster? That's one of my favorite games from Remedy. So I'm very much looking forward to both the games. I know both the games have amazing fan bases. What are you guys' thoughts? Let me know in the comments below because I'll be replying to your comments like a gamer. I'll, I'll work on that one. With so many games coming this year, it's hard to say whether your PC will be able to handle these games. Well, thankfully, Stalker 2 has announced its requirements, but it looks like the requirements are, are a little bit beefy. The requirements of Stalker 2 are a bit beefy because the recommended one requires you to have RTX 2070 Super or a GTX 1080 Ti with 16GB RAM and Intel Core i7 9700K or Ryzen 7 3700X. While the minimum will require you to have GTX 1060 with 8GB RAM and Intel i5 7600K or Ryzen 5 1600X. The interesting fact about this is that both of these requirements have an additional note saying an SSD is needed. We'll expect the game to be loading faster in SSDs than hard disks because of course you know the difference. So it looks like just like me, you guys have to wait for the games to load. Yep, I am. I'm still not there yet. Personally, I believe that Stalker 2 would have those requirements when they announce the trailer or the gameplay footage because the thing is, by looking at the gameplay, you can see how strong a PC is needed to play that game. They have RTX from the looks of it, of course, ray tracing, reflection looks amazing, texture looks amazing, the whole graphics looks amazing. So I believe that your PC would be requiring much more power to play through this game. Looks like for me, especially with the 1050 Ti, I will have to somehow play the game in somewhat of 30 FPS in the lowest settings. Yep, that is 2021 for me. Speaking of another game that looks amazing, Forza Horizon 5 will be releasing this November and the director says that Seasons will be coming back to Forza. By Seasons, I mean Autumn, Spring, Winter, Summer, those things. These seasons were introduced in Forza Horizon 4 where seasons would change every week from spring to summer to autumn to winter. Back in Forza Horizon 4, seasons were universal which means that everywhere it was the same season but it's not going to be the same for Forza Horizon 5. FH4 was set in UK whereas FH5 is going to be set in Mexico and the weather there is different. The director said that the Mexico's weather has huge elevation changes and it has different seasonality in different regions which they have tried to recreate. It's still going to be four season but it affects different biomes differently. You may get dust storms in dry season, you may get tropical storm in storm season which is autumn and so on. Because of Mexico, players will see a variety of storms to race in and that would not only be a spectacle but it would also be an amazing race. The director also talked about how FH5 wants to expand in-game's open world activities to really reward exploration. Although we don't know what type of cars will be around because in FH4 it was focused in British car history and since this time around they are going to Mexico, they might even focus on the Mexican rides and the history of that. 
definitely this game has a lot to explore. New places, new cars, a spectacle when you're driving through these storms and through these seasons. But there's another thing to be happy about and that is they have the minimum requirements for this game which is not as beefy as Stalker 2. In Steam, Forza Horizon 5 minimum requirement suggests that you need a GTX 760 or AMD RX 460 with 8GB RAM and Intel i3-4170 or i5-750. The minimum requirements look very low, so I guess a lot of people might even enjoy this game. But let me clarify, it was not mentioned in Steam that with this minimum requirement you will be able to play the game in 30fps or 60fps. None of that is mentioned, so which means it could be possible that these requirements only let you play the game probably not in the smoothest FPS, meaning it might not reach 30 FPS, it might be around 20, 25 or 30, somewhat like that. So what do you do now? Well, you have to wait and see what requirements come upon. We have to wait for the recommended requirements because there's none. If you take a look at Forza Horizon 4, I can play that game in 1050Ti, GPU and, and Ryzen 5 2600 with 16 GB of RAM in 60 FPS at the highest settings. So maybe with my GPU, I might be able to play around low to medium and around 45 to 60 FPS. Anyways, what do you guys think of Forza Horizon 5? Let me know in the comments below because I am very much looking forward to it. I love racing games and it's been so long and I want to play that game. It looks like Sony is now coming back with their own version of E3 because it seems like Sony has just registered a trademark for a PlayStation Experience event, which means we could see a PSX event later. There has been some sort of rumor going around that Sony is doing an event in July 8th. This particular rumor came from someone who leaked about Far Cry 6 and according to this rumor, Rockstar will be showcasing GTA 5 Expanded and Enhanced Edition and now with the registration of a new trademark, it looks like that this event might be what Sony is planning for. Although this is a rumor so don't take this seriously. Now before this rumor came around, there was another rumor about the Sony event. And according to that rumor, the Sony event was supposed to happen on June 28th. So now it's all confusing. It's July or is it June? So from my understanding, maybe the event might happen sometime between June 28th to July 8th. I believe those are the time and sometime between that is when they are gonna bring an event. Fans have been waiting for Sony to make a move because how Xbox and its Game Pass are bringing games day one to Xbox Game Pass while Sony, well they don't have anything necessarily right now. And since during the E3 time Sony was not there and usually Sony would bring some new games, I think it's time that Sony also announces some more new games. According to speculations, this new event can showcase Last of Us Part 2 factions and maybe some of the 25 first party exclusive game might even be showcased in this event. There could also be more information about Death Stranding Director's Cut, but again we will have to wait and see. What do you guys think of this event? Do you think that Sony will have something more to showcase other than video games? Do you think that Sony might have an answer to Xbox with their own Game Pass or whatever they want to showcase? I don't think so that's going to happen, but we will definitely see a lot of games. Speaking of something that is definitely coming, that is Cyberpunk. And Cyberpunk 2077 is coming back to PlayStation. Cyberpunk 2077 had a rough launch on every single platform and the worst was experienced by PlayStation 4 players. The bugs and textures were so horrible that people wanted a refund and Sony did give refunds, which Sony does not do at all. After a week of games launch, the game was removed from the store and ever since that, CD Projekt Red has been focused on updates and bringing patches to the game to fix it. After numerous number of patches, the game does work very well on PC but cannot be told the same about PlayStation 4. CD Projekt Red director told earlier in April that they want to make sure to fix this game so that they can be proud of. With that, it looks like Cyberpunk 2077 is heading to PlayStation so that people can buy it and that is happening next week. Although right now the game is already present in the store but you can only wishlist it and cannot buy it. Sony has also warned players that there might be some issues in the game and CD Projekt Red is still working on to fix them. It is really sad to see that even after 6 months the game is still not fixed and because PlayStation 4 players had the worst experience of Cyberpunk I think the fixes are probably not done which is terrible. But even, though all of the, but even though all of those fixes are done, the game still lacks content. The city looks empty, the missions are bland and it just doesn't feel good to you know, ride in the city. That's what Cyberpunk lacks a hell lot more than bucks. But at least PlayStation players will get a chance to play the game or will they? Because to be honest, right now, a lot of people consider Cyberpunk to be not so good. 
especially PlayStation 4 players. So maybe they won't even buy the game. So let me ask you this question. Will you be buying a game once again that you refunded before because of bugs and a lot of issues? Will you be doing that? Let me know in the comments below. Well, that is going to be the end of Top Gaming News. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Leave a like and comment down below what do you think about this very episode and all the news we just discussed. And definitely subscribe to Gamer Connect to watch more news videos like this every single week. My name is Gaming Manus and I shall see you guys in the next video. Until then, stay awesome, stay safe and always remember to play awesome games and have fun.